Wow, do we see some interesting things happening right now with this whole trade war. You know, we've just had that recent tariff hike and all the threats surrounding it and all the rhetoric and the nonsense from both sides. We have to take a reality check here. And I'm going to bring all of you guys up to speed as to how things are and what's going on with all this trade war thing. Because I don't think people actually understand the whole situation. You know, having lived in China for such a long time, I really found it quite difficult to understand how it is that Chinese companies were able to send small little things like, say, a, a few little screws or something to a place like America and pay zero shipping. You know, if you order off Amazon or something, you order a tiny little thing from China and it arrives, you know, in a week or two, but you pay no shipping. It didn't make a lot of sense to me because years ago, some of you might have noticed I have these uh, T-shirts, these uh, silly little T-shirts with Chinese idioms on them that I made. I made a whole bunch of them with my friend uh, Tyrone. We decided we'd start a, a business. We thought, great, we live in China. You know, and this is far, many years ago, like more than 10 years ago, probably 11 or 12 years ago. So we live in China. We can get stuff made cheaply because that was what was happening at the time. So let's get these T-shirts printed. Let's make some funny, interesting Chinese sayings on them. And then let's sell them online. You know, we can sell them to people overseas and wherever, America, Australia, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we thought it'd be a fantastic idea. So yes, we went and we approached a place. We sat down, told them to make us a thousand t-shirts, I think it was. Uh, we both clubbed some money together. We paid the guys to do the job and we picked up all these boxes. And I actually remember I had no car or anything at the time. So I had to use a bicycle and balance these things and a little e-bicycle and go back and forth about 10 times to get all the stock. Anyway, so there we are sitting with all these t-shirts in our, our apartment. He was my housemate at the time. And we thought, great, let's sell them. So we thought uh, we'd, we'd put them online. So I did. At that time, my YouTube channel was only just starting, but um, I kind of put a little advert out. And I got a guy who said, yeah, I'll have one, you know. And he was in, where, Canada, I think. So I was like, great, this shouldn't be difficult. Let's just take it down to the post office and let's uh, send it off. So we get down to the post office. First of all, post office says, sorry, we can't send clothing. Like, why can't you send clothing? No, because it's not like in a professional packaging. And apparently, at least it was when we tried, it's not legal to send secondhand clothing out of China through the post. I'm um, not sure what that's all about, but that was a thing. So, okay, they can't send it, no problem. Let's figure out how other companies ship. So we looked at all the shipping companies, you know, your FedExes, your UPSs, your various things, your China, China QID stuff, you know, they have their own kind of special postal services. So it turned out the cheapest we could send it to Canada for was something like five times what we were charging for the t-shirt itself. It was something ridiculous and I can't remember, but it, around about a hundred US dollars or something to ship a single t-shirt to Canada. And I couldn't figure this out. How is it that Chinese companies could send things so cheaply? And then it turns out that, you know, all Chinese com well, Chinese companies get subsidized by um, these trade deals with America and various other countries and the government subsidizes them too. So to ship things overseas through a Chinese company, obviously has to be properly registered with the government and everything, costs nothing. It's free for them to ship basically. And if they do have to pay shipping, it's very negligible. So they could literally just load up containers worth of crap and send it anywhere in the world for free. And I think a lot of people real, don't, well, just don't realize what an unfair advantage that's given China when it comes to trade overseas. Also the whole tariff thing, the way it works for those of you, and this is very layman's terms, so don't, please don't try to give me a lecture in the comments exactly how it works. But basically, um, goods that were imported into China, they're taxed heavily, very, very heavily, like cars. When I went to go buy my car in China, I bought a Chinese car because even the cheapest foreign car was something like 200% of the cost that you would pay for it overseas exorbitant and that was all like a luxury tax they have to put on any car that's or any luxury brand so if it's a lv bag or anything it gets a luxury tax then it gets a foreign tax of some kind and a tariff and all this so you end up you know buying a car that'll sell for say twenty thousand us dollars in america will end up costing eighty thousand us dollars in china and that's how it used to be of course they got caught up in the International Monetary Fund actually told them, listen, you can't keep doing that. So taxes were reduced and so cars did become more reasonable as things went on. But you still end up paying for any imported goods a lot more in China than you would in other countries that import the same goods because they make a lot of money out of that by taxing that, right? 
However, the opposite does, does not apply. In countries like America, they don't put big tariffs on the goods coming in. And that's why you make a lot of money. You can undercut the market. If you can make a cheap pencil sharpener in China and send it over to America and you're not paying any tariffs and you're not paying any shipping, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. You cannot compete with that. Because if you try to make a pencil sharpener and send it to America, you know, you're paying your import duties, you're paying your this and that nonsense, you know, and uh, your shipping. So your pencil sharpener is going to be on the shelf there for $5 and the Chinese one is going to be on there for 20 cents. So you see, China's had this massive advantage, which has allowed the economy to grow in such an amazing ex exponential way for so long um, that they've just gotten used to it. And it seems like everybody in China has forgotten the fact that all of these sort of measures that were put in place were put in place to help them, to help China, because the rest of the world doesn't hate China. The rest of the world wants to help China. In fact, part of this whole thing was to try and um, help China achieve democracy. And of course, that's a selfish goal of Western powers to try and uh, push democracy on a country that doesn't want to be democratic. Uh, but that was one of the reasons. And of course, it results in cheap goods, which you know, everybody in the West wants cheap goods. You want to go and buy a TV that costs next to nothing. You, you want to go and buy a pencil sharpener that's 20 cents rather than $5. So it was a win-win situation for a long time. But unfortunately, it's reached a point now where um, there's this arrogance that's built up and this forgetfulness of why the Chinese economy has done so well. It's kind of like, let's put it this way. Let's just say you're having some friends over, right? and you want to cook an amazing dinner, but you just can't get the ingredients, right? You know how to cook, but you just can't get the, the meat and the sauces and the so on. So a friend of yours goes and travels far, gets in his car and drives to all these different places to get you this sauce and to get you that meat and get you this and that. He brings it all to your house. You cook this amazing meal, put it on the table. Your friends come over, they're like, wow, look at this, this fantastic meal that you made. And you sit there and you say, yes, I did everything myself. This meal is all about me. I'm amazing. And you don't even mention your friend. And in fact, you, you try to push him out of the room. Don't let him join because you don't want anyone to know that he's the real reason that you got all the ingredients in the first place. So there's that whole thing going on in China now where um, China believes that its, its economic miracle is entirely self-done and nobody helped and nothing helped. And they've become incredibly arrogant now about this. So when America steps in with um, the president saying he's going to raise the tariffs and stuff, they feel incredibly insulted. Like, how dare you? It's kind of like the friend who went to get all of the ingredients coming back and saying, hey, you know, uh, can you pay me some gas money? Because that actually cost me a lot of time and effort. And you're like, no, of course not. I did all the work. It's kind of what's going on in layman's terms. So this has left a kind of a situation where you've got an angry, arrogant, friend. And then you've got a place like Vietnam, which they're not angry and arrogant yet. Maybe they will be in the future. But right now, they kind of want you to help them get those ingredients because they really want to make an amazing dinner. So would you rather keep driving around, picking up ingredients to take to your arrogant, angry friend? Would you rather go and pick up ingredients and all this stuff to take to your friendly friend who really wants it and who really wants to help you too. He's kind of like, hey, listen, um, could you please get this, these ingredients for me? I will cook dinner. I'll invite you over. We can all enjoy it together. Whereas this guy's like, go get me the ingredients, but you're not invited, you know? And that's why Vietnam is currently much more attractive than China when it comes to foreign investments, because they are more than willing to bend over backwards in order to allow foreign companies to build factories bring business over, they're very accommodating, and they're not blocked off like China. So I hope my strange little analogy, layman's terms video has helped a couple of people understand what's going on. Of course, it's far more complicated than it is, than, than what I've stated, and you'd be a fool to think it wasn't. But the gist of it is, is that China's a lot more difficult to deal with, angry and arrogant these days, whereas places like India and Vietnam are a lot more friendly and open to negotiation and open to doing business and uh, it's just more pleasant to deal with them. So what it really boils down to at the end of the day is Vietnam is currently going through what China was going through I'd say about 10 to 15 years ago and so we're going to see the cycle repeat itself and who knows in the future we'll have to see we'll only be able to know when it comes around but I do feel that 
Vietnam will probably end up being in a very similar situation as China is at the moment. The only difference is that Vietnam has a bit more of a history with the West. It's a little bit smaller and it's probably not going to end up being as restrictive as China is at the moment. Anyway, until next time, guys, I hope you learned something. I hope you get inspired to come and travel to these different countries that uh, I have been lucky enough to, to experience throughout my lifetime. And I'll see you in the next video. So until next time, you know the drill, as always, stay awesome. Don't forget every single Friday, right over here, you can take a look at another Serpents A Day video. Wednesday, Lao86 over on his channel. And of course, the most important one, ADV China, every single Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.